respected seniors and dear friends today i am going to talk on tap block in clinical practice tap block is most widely blocked for abdominal surgery analgesia and nowadays i would like to thank dr kamal isavi for providing me this article this made me prepare this presentation uh, and i hope this presentation will clear your doubts because there are many doubts when you are practicing tap block so if you look at the history in the 20th century option for providing analgesia in abdominal surgery was epidural and it was gold standard it provides excellent analgesia but because of increased use of anticoagulant in abdominal surgeries increased use of laparoscopic surgery and early mobilization use of epidurals has been reduced since last few years and in the beginning of 20th 21st century rafi and mcdonnell introduced tap block in the practice and it was like a game changer for providing analgesia in abdominal surgery but there are many confusions and i will try to talk on all aspect of tap block during this presentation so if you, if you look at the anatomy abdominal wall is composed of uh, little abdominal wall is composed of mainly three layers of the muscle that is external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscle and if you look at the nerve supply of the abdomen it comes from the t6 to t12 and l1 so this nose travels in the intercostal space after traveling in the intercostal space they come out in the abdominal musculature and travels between the uh, between a plane between internal oblique muscle and uh, transverse abdominis muscle and this plane is known as tap plane but if you look at this diagram you will see that uh, this nose enter the tap plane at different level if you look at the t10 t11 and t12 they enter the tap plane somewhere near mid axillary line so if you give conventional tap block this nerve will get blocked if you look at the t7 t8 and t9 they enter the tap plane anterior to the anterior axillary line below costal margin so here you require subcostal tap block and t6 enter the uh, supply the abdominal wall and enter the plane just below the rectus abdominis muscle so uh, rectus sheet block is required to block that part and if you go lo lower down ilioinguinal nerve and iliohypogastric nerve enter the tap plane just posterior to the anterior superior leg spine it is roughly 3 to 4 cm cranial and 3 to 4 cm lateral to anterior superior leg spine they enter in this plane and supply the inguinal region so according to this various type of tap block described in the literature there is a conventional tap block that is between uh, uh, costal margin and uh, iliac crest in the mid axillary line which block t10 t11 t12 it provides analgesia for lower abdominal surgery if you go for subcostal tap block that is uh, in the anterior axillary line it blocks t7 t8 tn t9 it is just below the iliac crest you have to start injecting the drug from uh, uh, just later to the midline and you can block this and ilioinguinal nerve and iliohypogastric nerve is the lower tap block or it is the tap block just above the iliac crest so if you know this anatomy you can choose the block wisely and provide analgesia accordingly and one one most important thing you must remember that this provide analgesia for somatic pain only for visceral pain you require some other, other analgesic like opioid or tramadol or paracetamol or diclofenac so tap block is a part of multimodal analgesia it is not so sole anesthetic or sole analgesic for abdominal surgery it is a part of multimodal analgesia so as i described some important anatomical point anteronatal abdominal wall is composed of three muscle external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscle 
T10 to T12 enters tap plane in mid axillary line. So he, uh, conventional tap block block this uh, nose and uh, it provides analgesia for lower abdominal surgery. T6 to T9 enter the tap plane medial to the anterior axillary line. So here you require a subcostal tap block. T6 enter just lateral to the lignea alba. Ilioinguinal now, iliohypogastric now gets innervation from T12 and L1 mostly. In 20% of the patient, it it is from L2 and L3 also. It enters the teplon near the anterior one third of the iliac crest. So it is some, somewhat anterior. Uh, conventionally, we were taught that uh, mm, hernia block was given uh, anterior uh, to the uh, uh, medial to the anterior superior iliac spine. But if you inject the drug here posterior to the anterior superior iliac spine, you will block the both the nerve in same plane. So this is the classical tap block which was de described by uh, McDonnell and uh, Rafi. Here the, it is the injection of the drug is in the uh, pettis triangle. Pettis triangle is formed by posterior border of external oblique muscle and uh, posteriorly it is formed by anterior border of latissimus torsi. Its base is formed by iliac crest. But in 18% of the patient, this triangle is absent. Here, there are overlap. There is overlapping of the muscle, so there are all chances that you miss this triangle. But if you look at the anatomy, this is little posterior than conventional tap block. Here you can see the, it is quite posterior to the mid axillary line. So when you inject the drug here, some of the drugs spread over the quadratus lumborum muscle also. And there are reports that if you have injected large volume, it will spread upwards in the thoracolumbar fascia and uh, it may sp spread up to thoracic paravertebral uh, space also. And uh, there comes the concept of quadratus lumborum blocks. So LR tap block, uh, uh, it is said that it blocks uh, now the above umbilicus also. Uh, but with conventional tap block with ultrasound in mid axillary line you don't get uh, nose above T10. So with classical tap block sometimes you get analgesia for T7 and T T8 also. Here you can see when you inject the drug uh, between uh, external oblique and uh, latissimus dorsi muscle drug may travel to the quadratus lumborum muscle and quadratus lumborum plane block. Uh, can happen with this posterior abdominal wall approach in the pettis triangle. Ultrasound guided technique as I said it is in the mid axillary line you have to put the probe in the mid axillary line between costal margin and iliac crest find three muscle uh, external oblique uh, internal oblique and transverse abdominis. Internal oblique is the thickest of all muscle and there is a plane between internal oblique muscle and transverse abdominis muscle and you have to uh, come in plane from anterior to posterior inject the 20 ml of LA and it will provide analgesia in the lower abdominal surgery. So if you compare ultrasound guided block with uh, conventional tap block, ultrasound guided tap block is in the mid axillary line, drug spread between costal margin and iliac crest, it blocks T10 to T12 consistently it blocks sometimes T9 and L1 also it is almost into 50% of the patient but if you look at the landmark at the tap block it is more posterior in pettis triangle it drug spread posterior up to ventral surface of quadratus lumborum muscle and it may spread to T uh, thoracic paravertebral block uh, space also and it may block up to T8 and T9 and it provides more analgesia as compared to uh, ultrasound guided tap block Ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerve block in tap plane, as I said, you have to go uh, anti, uh, 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 cranial uh, and posterior to the anterior superior spine. You, uh, when you go 4 to 5 cm cranial and 4 to 5 cm posterior to the anterior superior spine, you will find both this now in the tap plane. And single injection of uh, local anesthetic 15 to 20 ml of ALA. Uh, will block both this now very nicely in the most of the patient and it provides excellent analgesia in the patient with LSCS and in patient with hernias. We use this block regularly in the uh, LSCS patient 
uh, we use bilateral block we give uh, roughly 20 ml of LA on the both side and we use ropivacaine and it provides 10 to 18 uh, hour of analgesia even with LOR technique this block works very well subcostal tap block you have to put the probe uh, uh, just lateral to the midline uh, below costal margin and what you will find is first you will find rectus abdominis muscle just below uh, at the lateral edge of the rectus abdominis muscle there will be uh, you will find transverse abdominis muscle also so you have to start injecting drug from here uh, uh, just above the transverse abdominis muscle and uh, when you go laterally you will find external oblique and internal oblique muscle also so you have to uh, go uh, medial to lateral and uh, uh, you have to dissect the tap plane uh, throughout to block the T7, T8 and T9. It provides analgesia for sur uh, surgeries like open cholecystectomy or upper abdominal surgery. If you uh, give along with a con conventional tap block, it will cover entire, uh, almost entire abdomen. So it is a very good choice. Uh, oblique subcostal tap block. Uh, uh, this is a newer technique you have to start you have to use longer needle you you can start from midline go laterally up to the mid axillary line keep injecting the drug in the tap plane and you can put the bilateral uh, catheters to provide excellent analgesia for abdominal surgery so you, you require at least 15 centimeter of needle for this block along with catheter, catheter to provide uh, analgesia for abdominal surgery now I will talk on the clinical efficacy of tap block in various type of surgery. Upper abdominal surgery, major upper abdominal surgery, you can give bilateral subcostal tap block and it gives very good analgesia. And there are many studies which suggest that uh, it reduces morphine requirement in the post-operative peri period and uh, it provides good analgesia. For laparoscopic cholecystectomy and bariatric surgery, I will say I will prefer to give local infiltration along with intraperitoneal installation to provide good analgesia uh, rather than giving multiple blocks to cover all the ports because all these ports uh, are just about the uh, umbilicus in most of the patients so you require subcostal tap if you want to give it in this surgery if you give a conventional tap block it is of no use there are few reports of uh, use of uh, tap block in bariatric surgery one of it is with uh, subcostal tap block and uh, they compared with uh, local infiltration and they found that uh, there was no much difference in uh, local infiltration and tap block so for uh, laparoscopic surgery i'll say uh, uh, local infiltration is good enough to provide analgesia Lower abdominal surgery, major gynecological surgery, conventional tap block in the mid axillary lines give good analgesia if incision is below umbilicus. Same way in the colorectal surgery, it provides excellent analgesia and reports suggest that it is a very good option to provide post operative analgesia, particularly when surgeon is using a, um, a low molecular weight heparin in the post operative periods and you want to avoid epidural catheters for appendixectomy open appendixectomy it provides excellent analgesia in the postoperative period inguinal hernia you have to give ilioinguinal hypogastric nerve block in the teplon uh, and you have to uh, inject some drugs in the sac when a surgeon reaches the sac uh, you can give uh, genital, uh, genital branch of uh, uh, genitofemoral nerve to provide complete analgesia plastic reconstructive surgery of abdomen according to the type of the abdomen you can use conventional tap block with uh, subcostal tap block to provide analgesia and it provides very good analgesia renal transplant patient we are using regularly tap block for this patient and it is very good uh, block in this patient to provide analgesia in the post-operative period for donut nephrectomy um, if it is an open surgery I will say thoracic paravertebral block is better choice than tap block because incision goes posterior also obstetric surgery tap block for LSCS under GA 
we have used uh, tap lock uh, uh, before uh, inducing GA in high risk cases. We give tap lock before induction, then put either endotracheal tube or LMA uh, and uh, do the high risk surgery with a lower concentration of uh, inhalation agent and a lower requirement of uh, all anesthesia drug to make it a bit safer. We give um, tap block in the uh, or ileoinguinal now and ileohypogastric now block in tap plane or in all LSCS patient uh, up, after surgery when surgery is under spinal anesthesia. So all our patients, LSCS patient receives uh, ileoinguinal now and ileohypogastric now block in tap plane in postoperative period for postoperative analgesia along with either diclofenac. Uh, or paracetamol tramadol combination. What is new in abdominal wall block? As I said earlier, there are various type of uh, uh, blocks uh, told quadratus lumbar lumborum block are emerging. There, there are three types, one, two and three. One is just posterior to the um, um, uh, uh, posterior to the transverse abdominis muscle where it ends you have to inject the drug uh, just like uh, uh, transversal is fascia block and drug will spread uh, anterior to quadratus lumbar muscle uh, second option is quad uh, QLB2 that is uh, uh, anterior to the quadratus lumbar lumborum muscle and third is the transmuscular quadratus lumborum block uh, these are still new blocks there is not enough evidence or post-operative post analysis provided with this. They say that it provides some uh, uh, visceral analysis also and uh, they tell that uh, it provides analysis up to 48 hours. But uh, there is not enough evidence to accept this block in routine practice. Uh, it requires more studies uh, to confirm their efficacy in the clinical practice. So for tap block, there is some safety concern. You have to be careful about needle trauma uh, because if when you are giving blindly or if you uh, don't give uh, under ultrasound guidance, uh, if a needle is not visible uh, during entire block procedure, then uh, there are chances your needle may go inside the peritoneum and there are reports of uh, liver hematoma and renal hematoma with tap blocks. But if you are careful, there are less chances I haven't seen, uh, seen any complication with tap block. Mal distribution of sometimes if you uh, don't dissect the plane properly, drug there, there might be intramuscular injection and uh, if you are injecting large amount of uh, drug in the intramuscular plane then there are chances of loss. So always be careful while calculating the uh, toxic dose of local anesthetic drug while giving this block because these blocks are high volume block uh, and it requires more amount of drug. So to conclude my talk you have to choose your block wisely according to the type of surgery. So if surgery is above umbilicus you have to go for subcostal tap block along with rectus sheet block. If it is below umbilicus you can go for tap block in uh, mid axillary line or ileoinguinal hypocastric nerve block. Tap block is a part of multimodal analgesia. It doesn't cover visceral pain. So for visceral pain, you have to give some morphines or uh, uh, paracetamol or diclofenac to cover the visceral pain. Uh, they are high volume blocks. Uh, suppose if you want to give a uh, tap block along with rectus sheet block in uh, uh, leprotomies where scar uh, incision is from uh, uh, incision is above umbilicus and below umbilicus you require bilateral tap and bilateral rectus sheet block so you have to dilute the drug more to provide adequate volume for this block so be careful in selecting the volume and concentration of LA to prevent local anesthetic toxicity so this is all about tap block thank you thank you very much